we are going to continue working on a mix of addition and subtraction fraction problems um, today. I've noticed that some of you guys got really good at the borrowing last week and then you were trying to do it on all the mixed numbers. Um, so we're gonna talk about that today because it's really important you only do it on the ones that need it. So go ahead and split your paper up. Um, these last two boxes I have blank because I have two word problems I'm going to talk through for these boxes. If you want to put these four in, try them on your own and then go through to um, box five and see how you did. You can do that and pause the video and work that through. Otherwise, I'm going to get to it. So three and four fifths, one and three fourths. I'm trying to throw in some different denominators that we haven't done a ton. Um, with four and five, you're actually going to go all the way out to 20. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 5, 10, 15, 20, and I've had some kids thinking that they did something wrong listing a lot of numbers out. If you have a lot of multiples, it just means the least common denominator is the opposite denominator multiplied by the other one, and sometimes that's the case. So don't feel like you did something wrong. This one is times four, so I'm gonna have 16. 4 times 5 is 20, 3 times 5 is 15. Now I'm going to add the 16 and the 15. When I add them together, I'm going to get 31 twentieths. I have had this happen over and over again. Don't forget these big guys over here. 3 plus 1 is 4. If you're going to miss anything in math, let it not be that one. It's the easiest one. Don't forget the big guy is over here at the side. So now I've got 31 20ths. This is improper. So we got to go out for ice cream and fix it. And I'm seeing a lot of kids doing this really, really well. And you've got this down. You'll practice so much and then you'll say, that's my answer. Er, that's not your answer. You've got to add it to this four here. So um, if you're making these mistakes, just slow down. You got to look at the whole problem and not just what you're doing in the moment. So you've got to add the four and the one and you get five and 11 twentieths. And this is the answer, answer. <laughs> um, this next one, least common denominator of eight and four. If you need to write them out still, do it. If you've got them memorized, don't <laughs> do it. Um, if you know what it is, you don't have to write it out. This is just to help you learn the steps. So we're gonna turn them into an eighth. Four times two is eight. Three times two is six. And this is where I'm still seeing some of you do one minus six is five. One minus six is negative five. That's for next year. So slow down. When you have the smaller number on the top, we gotta go to the guy and ask him for some change. And we're gonna give him a one and ask him for some fraction change. Uh, last week, I saw a ton of people missing problems because they forgot this step. Even though I said it several times, this is the part you've got to make sure you actually do. And then we ask them for our fraction change. We've got an 8 as the denominator. We're going to ask for 8 eighths. Then you have to actually add these together. Another mistake I saw last week a lot. 1 plus 8 is 9. Um, some other things I saw, um, let's say the three-fourths was on top and you change it into six-eighths. 
some students were adding four fourths when we already determined the LCD was eight. If the LCD is eight, that's a fraction change you have to get. So be careful. Nine minus six is three eighths. Five minus three is two. And I'm really done because three is prime and eight and three are not friends. I'm gonna go this next one a little bit quicker, three and four. Our LCD is 12, we've done this one a ton. Three times four is 12, four times eight, or I'm sorry, two times four is eight. Four times three is 12, one times three is three. Now I add eight and three, I get 11 twelfths, but am I done here? Nope, I gotta add the seven and the four. Don't forget about the big numbers. Had a lot of people doing that. This next one, we've talked about this one a lot. And Friday, I still had people saying, I don't know what to do. There's not a fraction here, so we have to put a fraction here to subtract three fourths. The way we do it is to go to our guy at the market and we say, hey man, can I have some change? And he says, yeah, of course, what do you want? Our fraction change is four fourths. Whatever your denominator is, your fraction change is your denominator over your denominator. And now I can do four minus three is one fourth. But what did I forget to do? I almost did it myself. You gotta cross out the 15 and make it a 14. Otherwise, you steal a dollar from this nice guy and that would be really sad. 14 minus seven is seven, and I'm done. These next two, I wanna talk about two word problems that I've seen in the past. I'm gonna put them up here just to talk about. Please don't write this down. <laughs> We're just gonna go over it together. A baker had 48 cups of flour in a container the baker used 11 and 1 fourth cups of flour on Friday and 14 and 1 half cups of flour on Saturday. How many cups of flour were left in the container? When you get to word problems and these fraction assessments, you've got two doors to open, add and subtract. You've got to figure out what you need to do. On this one, a lot of kids are like, oh, I see left, so I subtract. But in fifth grade, a lot of our problems are multi-step. So think smart, okay? I wanna work smarter. I'm gonna combine my flour and add for step number one. I'm gonna add and step number two, what's left, obviously subtract. So first I'm gonna combine these two together, which is really easy to do because you guys know the LCD of two and four is just four, it's easy. One plus two is three. And then I'm just adding these together. I have 25 and three fourths. Don't freak out when you see these bigger fractions because next year you're gonna have really wonky ones. And then we're gonna have to do 48 minus 25 and 3 fourths. Oh my gosh. If I didn't have a fraction here, you'd be like, this is easy. I've done this since like second grade. Don't freak out. Go to the guy, get your fraction change, and ask him for 4 fourths. 4 fourths minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth. 7 minus 5 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. And that's my answer. So this is a two-step problem. I've seen some people do 48 minus 11 and 1 fourth, and then take your answer and subtract it by 14 and 1, four, 1 half. That wouldn't be wrong, but this is just a little bit faster. The next one's really wonky. And this is why I've practiced number lines with you guys so much because if you can't 
do fractions on a number line, this problem is impossible. An equation is modeled on a number line. An equation is just a math problem. It's just the word we use for it. Which equation does this model represent? Well, first things first, we gotta figure out what this point is. So one way I told you guys to do it is to draw a bar model on top of your number line. If I shade in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there is a total of eight, this point would be seven eighths. And this is where it gets tricky. You've got this wall and another arrow going backwards. Well, if I'm going backwards on a number line, am I usually adding or subtracting? Think about that. If you're going towards zero, that's subtracting. What did I subtract? One, two, eighths. This problem, guys, is not hard. It looks hard because you don't have a lot of numbers there, but this is just seven eighths minus two eighths, and you don't even have to simplify on this one. It's just five eighths, and you're done. So take a look at that. Um, another thing you can do if you learned how to do the rainbow jumps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and number all of them eights. I've done this before too, but I like drawing the bar model on top. You can number them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one whole is just eight eighths to make sure you've got the right fraction for the job because the number one thing that goes wrong is this denominator has the wrong number on it because you count the lines in between and not the space in between. So if you just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you've got the wrong number and everything goes wrong. So be careful on that. If you need to draw it out and write it out like this way, go for it. If you can visualize this fraction bar over it like my brain does and that works for you, do that. All right.